For the old Apple, building electronics involved putting together parts from hardware vendors in uniquely designed cases running patented software. Setting aside display and battery technology, this episode of Chip Wars Chip focuses Wars. on how Apple has changed into the largest buyer and designer of silicon in the world, gobbling up over 9% of global supplies. Apple's experience with chips and mobile devices started over 25 years ago. In the 1980s, Apple founded Arm Holdings, a low-power chip design company. But with the failure of the Newton and Apple nearing bankruptcy in 97, Steve Jobs had to raise cash by selling most of Apple's stake in ARM Holdings in order to bring the company back from the brink. Fast forward about five years to late 2001, a new mobile device breathed fresh air into Apple and the mobile chip market. An 80 megahertz system on a chip designed by a small company called Portal Player in a small ubiquitous device called the iPod. Five years and billions of dollars later, Samsung came knocking on Apple's door with a better chip design and won huge contracts for newer iPods and the first three iPhones. Just like that, Portal Player was on life support. Then Nvidia swooped into save it because they wanted to get in on the mobile chip market game too. Check out the Tegra video links below. Naturally, Samsung and Apple became good friends. To this day, Apple's chip business accounts for about 9% of Samsung's total revenue. Then in April 2008, Apple started making moves. First it acquired PA Semi, a company that used to design low power chips based on the power architecture used in millions of power Macs before the Intel switch in 2006. But Samsung wasn't wasting any time either. Watch the Exynos episode of Chip Wars for the full story. In 2009, Samsung got a partner to help it create its own breakthrough mobile chip. The next year, Apple got the jump on Samsung before it could debut the fruits of this partnership. It bought Intrinsity to work on Apple's next big thing, the A4 mobile processor in all 2010i devices. The A4 has a single ARM Cortex-A8 made at Samsung's 45 nanometer chip factory with a single core PowerVR SGX535 GPU. Released in April 2010 in the original iPad, the iPhone 4 in June, the 4th gen iPod Touch, and the 2nd gen Apple TV in September. It's actually a package on package with three pieces of silicon squished together, the Cortex A8 core and two RAM chips. These iDevices have two 128 megabyte RAM chips, except the iPhone 4 doubles that, all running on a wider 64-bit bus. For 2011, Apple stepped up the game with its next chipset on a dual-core Cortex A9 with the Neon Media processing engine. Just like the A4, the A5 came out first in the iPad 2 in March, the iPhone 4S in September, and then the Apple TV 3rd gen in March 2012. It runs at one gigahertz in the iPad 2, but it's suspected to clock at around 800 megahertz in smaller iDevices on the same 45 nanometer Samsung fabrication process. The GPU is upgraded to a dual core PowerVR SGX543 with 512 megabytes of RAM at 533 megahertz and more cache. The core is 100% more powerful than the A4, and the graphics are nine times better. For 2012, it looks like Apple is going to keep the A5 alive with a die shrink to 32 nanometers. This new version is 41% smaller and improves battery life by 15% when web browsing, 20% when watching video, and 30% when playing 3D games. They're in the 2012 iPad 2s, the 3rd gen Apple TV, and would be the best choice for an iPad mini if it comes out in late 2012. Following the previous timeline of chip releases, Apple came out with its next chip, the A5X, first in the 3rd gen iPad. It has the same dual-core CPU clocked at 1 GHz, but the star of the show is a quad-core PowerVR SGX543 GPU with a wider memory bus to help drive the Retina display. Architecturally, these additions and the 45 nanometer process make the chip twice the size of the A5, and the RAM had to be packaged separately. What's next? Of course, Apple keeps its cards close to the chest, but we can guess that Apple is sticking with the dual core 32 nanometer Cortex A9 for the rest of the year, but will hopefully clock it over 1 gigahertz for a performance gain. If you're thinking, why no quad core? Part of the problem is running LTE requires a lot of juice. This is the main reason the Galaxy S3 LTE is a dual core and why Apple probably has to follow suit, especially in a smaller form factor. The quad core PowerVR SGX543 GPU and 1 gig of 32 bit quad channel 400 megahertz memory could help iOS speed up in the rumored 4 inch display. Every year, Apple will buy more and more silicon chips. And with Samsung making the 32 nanometer chips in a new $3.6 billion facility in Austin, Texas, and the iPhone. 5 coming soon. These two companies will be breaking bread together for a long time. I hope you like these episodes of Chip Wars and thanks for the comments. Check out the others and thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, and making this channel something fun for everybody.